uh, we'll be talking about um, assessing the uncertainty of the effective leakage areas in uh, using a reductive ceiling. Um, I'm going through air infiltration, then effective leakage areas, the reductive ceiling, regression models that uh, were applied, how the uncertainty was propagated, and then some application and best practices. Well, when we are dealing with air infiltration, uh, besides weather, terrain, and shielding data, building details are important in modeling air change rates, air movements, energy demand, and this all make part of the decision and provide feedback to, to these variables. Well, uh, effective leakage areas um, are one of the, the data that one gets from the treatment of air tightness uh, measurements with fine pressurization. It represents um, a, the area of a single orifice uh, that produces the same leakage as, as a group of uh, leakages at the reference pressure difference. Uh, it is dependent on the, the air flow, uh, the, the pressure difference, the temperature or air density, and the discharge coefficient. Okay. Normally, it's a typical form of uh, expressing air leakage characteristics of building components or even whole envelopes. They, there are, uh, they are extensively available in ASHRAE and IEBC documentation. They are the result of repeated measurements, compilation of laboratory or in situ uh, experiments. But when they are done in, the, um, in a reductive ceiling way, uh, normally they use only the ordinary least squares regression for the air flow. They don't take in, uh, in account the variance in the, um, in the pressure difference and uh, no propagation of the uncertainty in these incremental steps. So what is this um, reductive ceiling? It's an offsetting of results from blower.s to attain the performance of individualized elements or groups. For example, the French database has 46 subcategories of leaks. Um, we can see that uh, uh, from several publications from them that the most frequent are windows, doors, and shutters, but these are not the most impactful. The most impactful range from lightning components, junctions between floors, electrical boards, and some trapdoors to attics. And normally this leakage assessment is qualitative, either by thermal image or smoke. Uh, it's, it is not quantitative often. And the studies that uh, provide some quantitative assessments, uh, the background after the, the initial assessment ranges from uh, is a big number, 45 to 75%. So um, what, what can we do to make this data treatment uh, a bit different? After the, the measurement itself, we, have the, the, we can use different regression models. I'm going to present uh, three of them just uh, to have a, a, a good scope. The, the first one is the one that is used in the, in the current uh, ISO standard. We use the distance to the regression values of the air flow, so we care for the variance of these values. The other one uh, is, is the same type of model, but it uses the fan accuracy for each point, so the uncertainty in the air flow based on the accuracy of the, the fan, and uh, the accuracy and resolution of temperature sensors. And then the weighted line of organic correlation that associates weights to the pairs of air flow and pressure differences. Uh, alongside the accuracy of the fan and the temperature um, sensors. How do we propagate the uncertainty in these cases, one step to the other? Well, for the ELA, we have the, the different components for the airflow exponent, airflow coefficient, the temperature, uh, the temperature, and then the second order effect for the correlation of these two. And the offset of the uncertainties between ceiling steps is uh, from one ceiling step to the other, we need to su subtract the, the effective leakage area from one, one group of components to the other, but the uncertainty is, is some, so it's incremental. So application and best practices. Uh, in the first assessment, um, a case study was, was assessed and um, we used um, a smoke tracer to identify predominant leaks 
and uh, to establish a certain filling step sequence. And while, while some leaks were uh, easy to identify, some others were a bit of a challenge because of exterior fini uh, finishings. Well, well, after this initial assessment, and because of the subcategories uh, inherent, uh, 12 filling steps and 11 leakage path types were selected, according to this one. Mechanical ventilation, heating and air conditioning elements, for example, plumbing, several type of joints, openings, and last the entrance door because of the lower door. Well, there is a high dispersion. It was, it was um, concluded that, and no leakage path exceeded 18% of the total. And the uh, weighted line provided the higher calculated uncertainty the air flow. These were uh, 2.6 and 1.7 times greater than the other two methods, uh, which is, uh, this is for single, single results of pairs of pressurization and depressurization um, measurements. About the effective leakage areas, the, this is an, uh, the average of the ceiling steps. Uh, we can see that it's almost three times higher than the double of the average, but the ranges are more, more expressive. For example, with the, the ordinary squares from the ISO, um, in the first step, we've got 7% of, uh, of the uncertainty at 4 Pascal, but in the last ceiling step, it, it was 13%. And with the weighted line, we started with 17% of the first offset between default and mechanical ventilation, and we reached 37% in the last step after 11 steps. This was, uh, well, quite, the, quite a difference. Uh, and it goes in line with uh, the findings of previous studies. Uh, another, another issue that we found is that um, the, double, uh, the, the weighted line of organic correlation, uh, as it uh, includes the uncertainty in the, the pressure differentials, uh, it's, it's fully, not fully, but uh, a very significantly justifies the, the, the zero flow approximation component. It's very well explained in the model because the difference, uh, the ratio between the, the organic least square by uncertainty that only follows the uncertainty in the air flow, uh, the R square of that relation is very close to one. Um, and, this, and these results are uh, results of the campaign with a, a wind effect quite low because we never achieved uh, wind speeds much higher than 3.5 meters per second. Well, these are the results from some normalized range of effective leakage areas. You can see it at uh, the gray. It's the, the organic least square according to the ISO. Uh, these are normalized by this matrix, okay? And this is only the range, and the, at, in black, the weighted line uh, range for the different uh, types of leakage paths. And this is only the range of the uh, one standard deviation. If you wanted to expand to a 95% confidence interval, this, this interval will be, will be uh, broader, okay? And what can we, what do we conclude about this? That um, the less impacting air leakage types should be assessed first. This is to minimize the uncertainty accumulation effect because most of the, the effect and the, of, of the, the accuracy components that's that, provi that provides more error, it's percentage-wise. So if we assess uh, components that uh, provide a bigger uh, slice of the air leakage, we are including a higher percentage of uncertainty in the, in the earlier steps. So we, we do not want to do that because we lose some information. Then similar types of uh, leakage paths, or at least with the same matrix, should be measured consecutively. Because if we need to adjoin, for example, plumbing was at a very uh, little uh, contribution for the whole air tightness. And if it was measured alone, the, um, the data analysis would have no significant, uh, well, uh, discussion. And the weighted line should be preferred since it considers a larger number of error sources. And even though there is a greater variability to it, 
the result of its application will be more uh, real, truer. And uh, as a way of justifying why this is important or why this gives an, uh, some value to the, to, the, to the simulations or to the design or interventions, effective leakage areas are primarily used in airflow models. Um, these ranges or this assessment of uncertainty can be used in risk assessments of minimum air renovations, comfort concerns, and energy relevant aspects such as heating and cooling loads. And this will support decision on intervention scenarios by cost, labor, invasiveness, and time, which are important. And with truer uncertainties, we can identify the most adequate leakage paths for intervention because it doesn't need to be um, the most impactful to be as, to be in, intervene. Normally, you, can, you could intervene a larger uh, number of air leakage paths that represent less impact, but you could be less invasive and you could have better results in the, in the, in the end. And that's all. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>